My friend Sethward plays a snake on TV as well as some other animal characters. Perhaps you've seen him. Sethward, the snake. Hi. Sethward the giraffe. Sethward the whale. Sethward the pika. And you're doing this as a hobby or as a profession? Oh no, this is my life. And he actually does have a pet snake. He's had this snake for many years and he got his information on how to take care of a snake many years ago. Since then, our understanding of snake care has changed and at this point, he needs some updating on his husbandry. He's coming over and we're gonna have a chat about it. I thought we would do it in front of the camera. Now, Seth Ward is a comedian and I am as well, but we're gonna try to keep this serious. He's gonna be here right on the other side of this logo. So do you just wear the costume all the time now? Swat costume. I don't have a costume. Do you have regular clothes on underneath? Snakes don't wear any clothes. No, it's just that my brother normally holds the camera instead of the tripod, but you saw him dash out as soon as you came in. Oh, uh, so. yeah, yeah. I've, I've got clothes in the car. You do? I, okay, yeah. so uh, we'll just cut here yeah, and we'll I'll, start I'll get him. <laughs> All right, Kent, you've met Seth Ward. He's just a man. He was in costume. You gonna be okay? <laughs> yeah. Man, you got me good. It was like you stepped right out of a National Geographic magazine and into my nightmares. All right, great. Let's just shoot the video. <laughs> yeah. Man, Hollywood special effects are just getting better and better. All right. Seth Ward, so we uh, connected at a Patreon function. Not Patreon for Green Room Pythons. Patreon, the company, did a sort of a convention thing. We met there. We started talking about your snake. And as we were talking, I went, wait a second. We got to get this on video. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So I'm, How I'm, often did that happen where people are like, oh, you're the snake guy. We have to talk about snakes now. Uh, it, always. It's all <laughs> and I love it because I love talking about snakes. It love it's, it's great. It's great. Hi folks, Future Bob here to do an important preface to this video. And since it is a very long video and I don't want to have another section, we're going to roll the horde of keepers over on Patreon right there. Thanks to those folks. First, spoiler alert, just about everything that Seth Ward is doing is considered wrong. And that's very common, I think, for the average person who just keeps a snake casually. Now, I mentioned this point later on in the video, but it's worth mentioning a couple times because it's really important. You're watching this video because either you're a full-on hobbyist of, of snake keeping or you realized that you needed some additional information beyond what the pet store told you, so you started looking up videos. Most people that just casually have a pet snake, or I should say many people uh, that casually have a pet snake, have never seen a YouTube video about snakes. They've never joined a Facebook group. They've never looked up anything beyond what the pet store told them because they got the information that they needed. These people don't know what they don't know and slamming someone for not knowing something is the wrong approach. We usually never hear from these people in this particular category of casual pet owner because they've never joined a Facebook group or never got online to talk about their snake. Uh, and you know, it's understandable that when the pet store gives you information on how to care for something, you just go with that and, and move along with your life, right? So it's important to be patient and understanding of the fact that even though keeping snakes might be a full on hobby for you and you want to soak up as, no, as much knowledge as possible, that's not the way it is for everyone else. So this is a longer video than I normally do because there's a lot of important information in here that I didn't want to cut out. This video can be used as a really nice supplement to the ball python care guide. It's got information on feeding, thermostats, body condition, all kinds of stuff. But the bigger picture that I'm hoping viewers come away with is that even though somebody may love their animal very much, they don't know what they don't know. And a little bit of patience, understanding, and kindness is a great approach. Thanks again to the Horde of Keepers over on Patreon and special thanks to our channel sponsors, Black Box Cages, Lane Labs, and Gray Family Snakes. Now that I've made this video even longer, let's just get back to helping Seth Ward with his snake. Thanks for coming over. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. So let's let's talk about this. I don't remember specifically what you were telling me, but it sounds like you've had a snake for how many years? I've had a ball python for, I mean, it's been about 20 years, I think, but different ones. So a few, okay. uh, I had two 
that were very, I think they were lovers. Okay. I, I don't know exactly. Were they in the same cage? They were. Okay. But I think they were both male. So I think they were gay lovers. Okay. Now, I, mean, I don't know the mechanics of snakes, but it, some late nights they were, they were going, they were having some time. Both of them have passed away. Sure. Understandable. And so then I've had this snake, Ophatlia. I've had her for um, now going on nine years. I love her name. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk know. about cohabitating snakes for a second. Yes, please uh, do. <laughs> so now it doesn't. You only have one snake now, so Correct. it doesn't matter for you. But but cohabiting uh, ball pythons is really bad because it causes Whoa. them constant stress. Okay. And so when you saw them cuddling, or yeah, what you thought was they were fighting, going at it. It's not really a fight. It's just kind of a hey. I I, I need this, this spot. Is my and, and the other room. one like oh no, I need that spot. They're they're fighting. They over, were doing uh, like the the twisting and falling. Oh oh, that's like that's lots of twistings. Wow. And then you guys hitting. So that is uh, male combat behavior. Oh really? So they were straight up war fighting. Yeah yeah. So that's <laughs> I it. thought they were making love. That's actually very interesting to me because I wouldn't think that males would do that unless females were in the room or if they were actively right. breeding. But yeah, that's... And I also want to say I thought that I had sexed them, you know, by using the internet. But I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Maybe they weren't both male. So females don't do that. And oh. male females don't do that. But males well, do there that you go. <laughs> when they're... That is that is male combat So behavior. I did one thing right, which was I sexed them appropriately. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is uh, one of my rules. If you see my my free roaming videos, one of my rules is that I don't allow sexually mature males to roam together because I don't want that combat happening. It's unnecessary stress. So, uh, this is something that's pretty common when people have snakes and they just don't know any better. They just go, "Oh, I have room for two, so I'll throw two in there." But that's not the situation now. So let's right, let's right. talk about your girl. What's her name again? Because I love oh, Fat Liam. Oh, Fat Liam. When I got her, she I think she was in breeding mode from the previous owners. And she was huge, like chunky. Okay. It felt so, like she was f larger than she was tall. Okay. Pro probably just fed too much. Pro I think so. Uh, so ha so she's a, a full-grown female uh, adult yes. ball python. And, I mean, obviously you've had her for nine years. Yeah. How is she eating now? She is eating fine. She doesn't have any problems with that. She, she has, in the past, ha have been very picky okay. to the point where she when I believe, I might be getting the numbers wrong, but it was at least six months where she refused to eat anything. How long has she been back on food? She's, it's been like two years where she okay. has not had any problem. And how often do you feed her? Every week to every other week, depending. Okay, I try perfect. to do every week. That's great. That's perfect. And it's two smaller mice. And it's because, um, I, when she was having a hard time, I think what started it, or at least one of the things I was feeding her these pretty larger rats and I was like, oh, this might be too much. Um, so when you say smaller mice, show me. Um, they're like this big typically. Okay. So when you're, when you get them at, what are you getting them at like Petco or something? Uh, no, at, um, a local pet store. What, so what do you ask them for when you go to the pet store? Uh, mice or, but I've also fed her. What size do you ask them for? Um, I say normal, normal oh. size. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. It's usually if they have them in. So like sometimes they just won't even have them. So that's when Ophelia doesn't eat for a week is if I like, sure. they were out. Let me show you the largest mouse that you could potentially feed a ball python. This is a jumbo mouse and they do get bigger than this. Like the retired breeders get a little bit bigger than this, but this is basically a jumbo mouse. Yeah. They're a, a slightly smaller than that. Okay. All right. Typically, I mean, every once in a while, I'll get one that's pretty big, like that size. Okay. But right. not usually. Here's here's what I want to say, and I, and I want to get a sense of how big your snake is, and we're going to compare it okay. to one of mine. But typically, an adult ball python can eat three to four of the one that I just showed you. for Like a big, a big breeder female. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have one female that, that sometimes, she used to only eat mice, and now she eats about half and a half rats and mice. Uh, and I feed her two to three at a time. Okay. And she's a pretty good sized female. Did you ever try feeding live rats? Uh, that's all, uh, yes, they were all live, yeah. Oh, okay. But now it's frozen thawed mice or they, are they alive? They're still alive, yeah. Oh, they're alive. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I, I've only tried thawed one time 
I think that was during me trying everything, right. and she didn't need it, so I was like, well, I'm not going to deal with that. Okay, so let's talk about this. I was going to try to talk about switching from mice to rats, but it's not that big of a deal as long as she's getting enough food. When you tried Frozen Thought once, how did you prepare it? Uh, let it thaw out uh, so that it wasn't. It didn't feel cold anymore. Uh -huh. It was definitely not frozen on the inside. I left it out for okay. a while. Right. And then I believe I... I was so not, I was sure she wasn't going to strike at me because she wasn't striking at anything that I was just dangling it with okay. my, you know, All right, so, so I'm going to tell you how to offer a frozen thawed meal because I yes. think you should try this. Okay, I, think, I think you should get yourself a, a couple of jumbo mice, maybe a jumbo mice to see if she'll take it. Mm -hmm. Don't waste your money. Just pay for the one. Right. Uh, thaw it out just like you did, but then you've got to warm it up. Okay. Need, the snake needs to think that it's live. right. Of course. So yeah. so it's got to be warm. And I find that snakes uh, typically will strike. Will they'll have a better strike response if it's actually warmer than what a real a normal oh, mouse would or a rat okay. would. So I heat them up to around 110 degrees. Okay. And what I do is I use hot water to heat them. And then I use a hairdryer. Oh. This is my snake hairdryer. Well, how do, about that? <laughs> do not use this on my beard. Uh, that's my snake hairdryer. And wh so what I do is, if I, ha I don't do this for every snake, but if I have a snake that potentially might not take the meal, I take the hairdryer and I blow it on the head to heat the head a little bit more, but I do it right next to their enclosure, blowing the so scent they, yeah, into their enclosure. Yeah. When the snake comes out looking for their food, because that's probably what your snake does, right? She's in a hot, is she in a hide? Does she have yes, a hide? Yes, she has a hide. Okay. Yeah. So she's in a hide, she comes out looking for her food. Uh, then you can offer her on tongs, don't dangle it. Yeah. Nowhere in life does and do mites and rats dangle from Mice the sky. Mites don't dangle from right. the sky? <laughs> they don't dangle. So what you do is you take a pair of forceps or tongs, just like this. Okay, I don't, I don't really use these, but oh, wow. uh, uh, these I don't like, but it's my other ones are somewhere else. So okay. Uh, so you take these, you, you hold it, scruff of the neck, so it's pointed this way at uh, them, yeah. and you dance it around, gotcha. and and let them sort of key in on it, and, and make Mickey Mouse sounds to make it realistic. May talk like Mickey Mouse, okay, great. absolutely. Uh, <laughs> so right, right. Ooh, snake. Ooh, ooh. So let's get. I, I want to get um, a big snake out to see how what what the size is of yours. Okay. And we're gonna get a snake out that's already out. She's just behind the couch and easy for me to get to. So hold on ooh. a second. Go ahead, you look. Take, so that's her. that's Lydia Deach. She's pretty, right? She is so pretty. How big is your and snake chunky. compared to? She's much thinner than this, around the same length, of course. But okay, so so same situation, but thinner. Yeah. Yeah. And and she would be thinner because Lydia is just at the start of breeding season right now, so she's okay. been eating quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she eats medium rats, which are which are much larger yeah. than a couple of of large. I mice. will say when I got a fat Leah. In my mind, my eight years ago memory, it felt like she was not this big, but closer to this as uh -huh. far as the way she tapered off, like so right. sharply, like right here. Right. Which, you know? which is, this is pretty normal for ball python. Ball pythons yeah. are, he are heavy bodied yeah. snakes and, um, up. and so when you see like, like she's, she's a big girl right now, but when you look at it, if we're talking about body condition. You can yeah, see her she's spine. So nice. Like, you can see her spine, and then it still tapers, right? Yeah. If she was, if she was overweight, if she was super overweight, okay, she would hers. When, would if you if you held up. her, yeah. When I hold her flat like this, yeah, yeah. I want you guys to see too. I don't know if you can, but when I hold her flat, her spine still tapers down. Yeah. It's With still a really the fat snake, they'll have fat fat coming up on either side of her spine, so the spine will be oh, indented wow. kind okay. of because that the makes fat sense. is so much. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, uh, you know, her body condition may have been okay back then. Yeah, honestly, I just was uneducated. I was like, she's chunky. I'm going to put Lydia Dietz back. Oh, goodbye, Lydia Dietz. She's been out all day. As far as feeding, I would try, yeah, yeah pull up. A, I, I want to see the enclosure. Pull up the enclosure. Yeah, yeah. So I built it, um, and I'm not, you know, an architect, but... It was mostly... Oh my God. Yeah. That's super impressive. It's supposed to be like a tree and then tree limbs. I hadn't got to the limbs yet. I don't think I have a photo of that. Okay. But so so this is... this. Would this be the size of like a 20 gallon tank? I, I don't know because it bends in a weird way. So she has a lot more depth than what like a 20 gallon. Oh, that's my butt. Sorry. I was building something. Oh, I don't something. need to... Yeah. <laughs> 
I don't need that. I love it. Um, but then I have a heat pad. There's glass that um, the heat pad's under. Okay. And then she's got the... That was just what I had. I have a better heat lamp than that so, one. So what is your heat pad set at? Um, it doesn't have a dial, so I... Whatever it came, the standard for Zoo, um, I don't know. Okay, do you have it on a thermostat? And then I have a thermometer and what we're talking about... No, not a thermometer. A, not a thermometer, a... Um, thermostat. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That 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 keeps it at a certain Oh, no. I don't have one of those. <laughs> I okay. just have a, a thing that tells me what it is. All right, okay. So, and if it gets really cold, I'll turn on... All right, hold on. I have to say something to them really quick. You guys, this is very, this is really important. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to Seth Ward about how important thermostats are. But this is one of the key things that when somebody, if Seth Ward went to Facebook and was like, "Hey, I've got this set up," and then and somebody went, uh, "Do you have it on a thermostat?" and if he said no, he would get absolutely slammed by everybody. You guys watching this video are, you guys know snakes, and it's like your hobby. It's, it's your hobby. You're not. You, it's not like you got a snake and you just have a snake as a pet. But that's how most snake keepers are. That's how most keepers of animals are. Imagine if you had a dog, you just have a dog, right? It's not like dogs are your hobby and you know everything about dogs, right? So many people don't know this and you've got to be patient about that and understand that, mm. that a lot of people don't know what you know. So now let's talk about this really quick. Uh, here's here's what happens when uh, I I should show you photos of what happens to snakes yeah. when they're not on a the thermostat. A lot of times thermo uh, heating mats fail. Mm -hmm. Very common for them to fail. The mm -hmm. fact that you've had it running for nine years. And I've gone done through this. a few. I, I've definitely replaced it. So a lot of times they fail in the on position and it heats up, heats up, heats Too up. Too hot. The snake doesn't know to get off of it and oh. they'll just sit there and burn. And they'll end up with massive burns oh, on their geez. bodies. And a lot of times it will kill the snake and a lot of yeah. times it'll set your house on fire. I would say when you get back home, even though it's worked out for this long, right. when you get back home, turn it off. Get yourself um, a thermostat. They're cheap. Okay. They're not, they're, they're, I have one. I'm going to pull one out and, okay, and I'll show cool. you, but great. Uh, they're not that expensive and they're easy to use yeah. and it keeps it at a certain temperature. Sure. So right now you don't know what temperature your snake's at. And there's a good chance that when your snake was off food before it was because it was too cool. Right. And she knew that she couldn't right. digest. Yeah. And, uh, and when it's too cool, they just won't eat because they know they can't digest. Right. And what'll happen is that rodent will, uh, will just rot in their belly. Yeah. And then they'll get bloated and, they'll and then die. they have to shoot it out or die. Yeah. That's right. They either regurgitate or, or it kills them. So there's a good chance that that may have been going on when your snake wasn't eating food. Mm. Now there's enough heat to digest, but you don't know what the heat is. It might be way too warm mm. for her in there. Mm -hmm. Where does she usually hang out? On she hangs out pad? in like, yeah, the heating pad. I have it to where it's under the hide. And then I have a space where she can go if that's a too much or on top of the hide and then the water is on the far end so that if she really wants okay. to get away from it so she, so she has one hide that's on the warm side yes the hide is on the, okay on the warm okay end. so uh really important thing is you need to have two hides and oh okay the, the reason is that the snake needs to be able to thermoregulate mm. and a hide especially for a ball python a hide is their security okay it's like a little kid's security yeah, blanket yeah, yeah. and they prefer that over anything else right. so even if they're feeling too warm if there's not a hide on the cool side she won't they're not going to hang out over there yeah, yeah so so the idea is to did you build the hide also uh no i brought it um for Oh, did you bring just, it? Yeah, just the one. It's oh, the log. It. It's the half log. It. So, uh, you know how some people put uh, over their driveway, they put a canopy right. that's like their garage, but it's yeah. open on both ends? Imagine if you were playing hide and seek and you went, I'm going to hide in there. Yeah. And you went right into there and just stood right there. Like it wouldn't be a hiding spot, right? Yeah, people would call you mentally unstable. Yeah, so even, but now most people put, put it like that. So it's closed on one end. Right, right. But still, you're still right there. It's still not... Gotcha. You're not hiding. So, okay. So a so snake hide... a little peekaboo. Yes, exactly. Okay. So this is a homemade hide that I made. This is just out of a bucket. I cut the bucket oh. and I put the hole right here. Here's a um, here's a produced snake hide mm. that's right there. And it just has the hole right there. So the snake is actually... Yeah. You know. So that's this is what she needs is two... Whether you make it yourself or, or get it, right. but she needs one on each end okay. where she's actually hiding. That's going to make her feel more safe, even though she's used to this, right. even though she's been doing it for, for nine years, uh, she's going to feel better 
and and probably will you'll get different behaviors from her and okay. she'll she'll act differently she'll feel like she's more hidden yeah. she'll thank yeah, you for yeah. it a lot of times people uh that have a snake for a long time well and you haven't done this but but it's usually a lot of people that are being defensive if if right. they're like being given unsolicited advice yeah yeah they're like, usually what they say is they go I've had the snake for 15 years. It's doing fine. Yeah, yeah. And doing fine. Like, you don't really know. These people don't know if their snake is doing fine. What right. that means is <laughs> if you look in its cage, you'll see a snake that's still alive. Yeah, yeah. And that's, right? It moves when I poke it. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, right? <laughs> so so even though the snake is still alive, it's going to do so much better with right. actual hides. It's going to be like, thank you for these hides. Yeah. yeah. So... Hide on each side. I've got a ball python care guide that's going to help you out, but we're going to oh, go wow. through this anyway. That's great. Um, so hide on each side. She's going to love that. Get get you know about that size that, that I showed you. Uh, but you you want her to be able to squeeze her body in there. Thermostat on your on your thing. Let's let me show you what a thermostat. Oh looks good. Like. Yes. Yeah. There are some of you that don't like these this style of thermostat that I'm going to show Sethward. Uh, and you're going to be like, you should be talking about Herbstat or, or Vivarium Electronics. Those are great. And I just bought one. But the Herbstat that I just bought was $400. Ooh. We're talking to somebody who has one snake. This works just fine. This is, a, this is fine. Wow. So, so here's the deal. Here's your, here's your heat map. Oh, come. This is already set. Oh, it's actually not set up. It's, it's plugged in currently. Okay, so look okay. at this. I'm just going to show you how this works. So right now what you have is this heat mat plugged into the wall. Yeah. Right. That's so it. what that's going to do is create a situation where your heat mat just heats and heats and heats. And we talked about right. what, what could happen. So the way this has to work is you, you get a thermostat. Yeah. You plug the heat mat into the thermostat yep. like this. The thermostat then goes into the wall. Right. So that's going to regulate your, your temperature. And then you've got a probe that's connected to the thermostat permanently. It's got a thermometer out there. Like this, and I'm gonna put this down. And so here's the probe. And you're gonna put that. Right in the middle of it? Right on the heat mat. And look, I have tape where I had it last time. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's good. I, I put it right there, and, I, and I'm using uh, foil tape. Okay. But I'm putting that right in there, the, yeah. the probe. And then this goes under the enclosure. Not inside the enclosure, but under the enclosure yeah. and heating that. Under the glass, yeah. You want your heat for your ball python to be around 88 to 90 degrees. Okay. That should be the hot side. Okay. Right now, you might be at 100. Yeah. You, like, you don't know, right? Yeah, true. The only way to really know is with a you got temperature gun. gun. Wow. You've got to have one of these. If you own a okay. reptile, any reptile, you have to have a heat gun Good because gun. this this tells you exactly right now the temperature is 70 degrees. What will happen is you might have your... You, you know, you might set that and go, okay, I'm going to put it at 90 and yeah. see what it's at. And then you check and you see that it's only 84 degrees. So then you need to bump it up yeah. to, to like um, 94, 95, 96 degrees on the thermostat to get it to read 88 to 90 on right. the actual heat pad. Okay. So you give it an hour or so and, and see where it's at. Uh, or it might go the opposite. It might you might set it at ninety and it's up near a hundred, and you're like, "Whoa, I gotta set it down." That's right, usually right. actually with glass. That's normally the way it'll go. Oh, is, okay. is you'll set it to ninety and then you'll you'll check it and it's quite a bit higher. So you need to set it down to like eighty four or something. Okay. You know, don't trust that to actually give you the temperature that the snake is sitting on. You have to have one of these to test that and then adjust your. Th your thermostat accordingly. I'm glad that we went over that because that's one of the biggest questions that I get from people. Right. Uh, even when they've seen my ball python care guide, I don't think I explained it well enough. Oh, interesting. And hopefully okay. I did here. I'm so. thoroughly educated at this point. That you can have. I'm going to give you that thermostat. What? Yeah. No. Yeah, so, yeah, so, oh my gosh. So we're going to. Wow, thank you. Yeah, no worries. Uh, so you can take that home and then you can just get it wow. set up right away. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, all right. I should have brought you some goodies. Oh my god! Okay, oh, next time. Next time for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you know I like whiskey. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I right now, this is something I was told mm -hmm. as somebody who was a professional snake person. Supposedly, I don't know. This was years and years and years ago. They said, "Don't feed the snake in the enclosure. They get used to striking. So when you're taking them in and out, they're going to strike you, thinking it's yeah. feeding time. So I feed them in the the bath." Mm -hmm. and I put down a towel, make sure it's not cold, and I try to make sure it's it's warm enough, but then I feed them always in the bathroom and then bring them back in. Okay, so you guys are going to, might might be surprised at what I tell Sethward, so just stick with me on this one. Uh, 
So um, that's bad information, basically. Thank you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Most of yeah. my information it's, is... It's, I mean, that's the thing. is People, especially when you've had snakes for a long time and haven't really looked at the new info, you just don't know. So right. you just do what the pet store told you to do yeah. 20 years ago or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, so, the, so the problem with that, this is why it's bad information, is that... Um, cage aggression for ball pythons is not really a thing. Okay. If you do have a ball python that's cage aggressive, meaning, and really what that means is that they always think you're feeding and they're so food aggressive that, that they're going to just bite at any heat signature. Uh, if that's the case, look at my video on hook training. I dropped something, mm. but hook training or tap training. I think I called it tap training in that video, but it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's probably not going to be the situation with your snake. And the problem, so it's it's unnecessary to move them for one thing, but the problem that that happens is that it could stress your snake out, and after they eat, they could regurgitate mm. because you've moved them. Now, right. I will say this: there are some rules that, like this, that are are probably not a problem. This snake is so used to it, knows what the deal is. It's not gonna eat tomorrow, and then you pick it up, and it goes, "What's going on?" Because right. it's used to being picked yeah. up and moved each time. So, is it's still not necessary, and you should still just feed your snake in the cage. But okay. when the snake is used to that, uh, it's probably not going to regurgitate. Not not that big of a deal. If we're talking about cohabbing a snake, snakes could cohab for years and years and years, and then all of a sudden one just gets fed up and kills the other one and tries to eat it, Ooh. which is what often happens. So if it's cohabbing a snake, it's a problem. If it's not a th uh, not on a thermostat for the last nine years. It's been on a heat pad without a thermostat. Tomorrow, Seth Ward's house could be burning down. Or, or um, in a better case, uh, the snake just dies and this house doesn't burn down. But both are tragic events. So that so those are things that even if it's been okay for years and years, it's got to change right, like right. immediately. So right. so we've got we've got certain things that are that are really important to change mm -hmm. and then other things that that can do, either don't necessarily have to right uh although this moving to feed i think you should just start feeding her in her cage now the other thing is the size of that cage i'm trying to figure out what's is it is it sm bigger or smaller than this it's a little lower but around the same amount the same area yeah it's okay. just oblong it's like a kind of almost a circle versus a rectangle okay okay um, this, this cage is on the smaller end for okay. a, for an adult ball python. I do have an adult ball python in there. He's male though, and he's smaller than yours and he doesn't move around a whole lot. Um, so my other suggestion was going to be a four by two by two cage is, is a great size for a okay. ball python. But again, on the list of important things right now, the cage that you've got her in is, is fine. Let's just fix okay, yeah. the parameters for now. Right. Plus you've got that really cool custom built thing. Yeah. You but know. I could, I could alter it. Since yeah, I made it. You could make it all shelves. Yeah. Or you could, I mean, potentially you could take the, this might be kind of cool. If you could, if you could have an area where she could get up. To I the have next that. Shelf. Yeah. She can get up to the next one. Oh yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. That's cool. I would glass that off and just make that part of the cage. Then you've got a good, yeah. you've got good space for her to roam. Yeah. Yeah. If she wants to, that's great. I had just cut the camera and Seth Ward and I were talking and I realized this thing that I was telling him I want to get on camera because uh, a lot of times a pet store will tell you something like I've seen this a couple times recently where people are like the pet store told me that I didn't need a thermostat with my heat mat. And uh, so what I was telling Seth Ward is that does happen. Like you hear that from pet stores, but it's not the store telling you that it's the employee that's just some kid that happens to have a job at a pet store, they don't know anything about snakes. They don't know anything about heat mats or thermostats. They don't understand what a thermostat does. So when somebody says, do I need a thermostat with this? They don't even know what that is. So rather than saying, I don't know, they feel yeah, like they yeah. have to answer the question. Yeah, yeah. They go, no, you, you, you don't, you don't need that. That's yeah. fine. Just do whatever. You oh, know. I saved you some money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so the, keep in mind that when you're talking to the pet store, you're not talking to the store. You're not talking to some animal expert. You're talking to a person who happens to have a job there. Mm -hmm. I used to have a job at, uh, it was called home club at the time, but it was basically home base or, or whatever. Lowe's. Yeah. Or yeah. Okay, no, yeah. Low, like oh, Lowe's. Okay, yeah. Yeah. And so these construction workers would come in and ask me about like electrical and whatever. And I was in high school. I had yeah, no yeah, idea, yeah. but I was making stuff up. I was like, oh yeah, that'll work for you. Yeah. You know, it's the same thing. I played with Legos. I know. Yeah. 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 
it's the same thing. You got some kid who has a dog at home and that's, they know their dog. That's it. And then people are asking him about reptile husbandry. They don't know. I always want to take Ophelia out more than what she does currently. Why is that? But it's because she's so aggressive that it feels like I have to fight her from striking. And I wish it wasn't like that. Okay. So, um, we're going to talk about why she might be striking, but one really important thing, and this is just semantics of, of language. Um, but when we say that an animal is aggressive, dogs can be aggressive. A dog could see you from across the street and run at and you. And choose to, to attack. To yeah. attack you. A snake will never do that. There's no snake in the world that will ever be actually aggressive. Mm. Like, ah, I got to get that They're thing. They're just defensive. Exactly. That's yeah. what that is. So, yeah. so it could be defensive or it could be a, a food bite. Ha- or have, just confused. Have you ever gotten a, a strike from? Yeah. Oh, I've been what, struck so many times. What happens that. when she bites you? I re- retract so hard that it's usually just a she let go. Of does she? But my point is, does she bite and let go really fast? You know what? I, I it's so hard to tell because I'm moving. I'm shocked always. I'm like ah that I pull. Okay. I've had teeth left in in me before. Okay. All right. So like I'm guessing that that is a defensive strike. Yeah. And so she's just not used to being. Um, she she doesn't she doesn't want anybody in in her right. enclosure. And one of the things that's going to help that is give her a couple hides. Yeah. So she feels like comfortable. She right now she's out. all she's totally out in the open, and she's like, I don't know this guy very well. He doesn't handle me a lot. I don't really. Yeah. I, I don't understand what's going on, and so I'm a little bit defensive. Uh, so it's going to help a lot to have those hides make her more secure. And then there are ways, and we can talk about that later, maybe in another video. There are ways that you can uh, get her to be more comfortable with okay. you without just going in with your big monkey paws and going, yeah. now I'm going to handle you. you <laughs> it's know? handle time. Because that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's better ways to do that. Um, but but that's what's going on. And she's probably always kind of at this level of, okay, I'm not comfortable here. Sure. The, I'm yeah. just, I'm, I don't feel, there's no place for me to really hide. And I'm a little bit keyed up. And then this big scary monkeys coming into my cage. Yeah. So the other thing is you've got that black light in there. Mm-hmm. Is that a heat light or is that just so that you could see? When I took that photo, it was, I think it was just a black light, but it was just for me to make sure that it worked. And I've since got a heat light that is, one was red and then I had a very, very warm white light. Okay. But the one that's in there right now is red. Okay. You keep it on at night. No, it, I only put it on whenever I'm like checking and it feels it's like winter and it's like really cold is seeming like that I have a thermometer. Okay. But we, when we were talking at Patreon con, I was like, you were like, those break, they're very unreliable. And I was like, you know what? I don't really see it move all that much. So yeah, because yours, yours is not is not like it's one even worse. Yeah, it's not You're, way worse. Yours is a yours is a, a an analog. It's a yeah, dial. It just yeah, just has a dial. Those don't work. They're like they're like pretend thermometers. Yeah, that, that's how I think of them anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so what you want is a thermometer hygrometer. Okay, and you keep those in every enclosure. You have something like that. Yeah, I'm gonna give you one of these too. I have an what? Extra one. I have an extra one. Yeah. yeah. Am I? Uh, so, it's Christmas all over. So here's the thing. Do you are you monitoring the humidity? No. When she sheds, does she shed all in one piece? Sometimes, but not all the time. Okay. Sometimes she makes a real mess. Okay. So sometimes she has good humidity. Yeah. And sometimes she doesn't. That's okay. that's all. So one piece is great. They have. They. I mean, not they have to be. They. Uh, that's normal. That's normal. One piece is normal. If there's sh- if it's a blow up of a yeah. shed, that means it's not a well hydrated okay. snake. Okay. So, so, and it's not, you know, they can be, they could never drink water. Some, some ball pythons don't drink much water at all, mm. but they get their moisture through the humidity. Right. So you've got to have humidity. got to have it in and there. And this monitors it. So this would you is, say keep the water under the heat pad as well, or it doesn't need to? Yeah. Um, yeah. What water, having the water dish on the heat, heat pad helps because it'll boost the right. humidity. But what's the substrate that you have in there? Wait, what does substrate mean? Uh, the, the, what, what, what is she Oh, oh it's coconut. Um, cocoa husk. Yeah. Great. Thick cocoa husk. Perfect. So all you do, that's that's great substrate to have. All you do is just, just add water it? to that. Don't don't no. mist it because that'll just evaporate right away. Oh. Don't mist your cocoa husk. You shouldn't be misting every day. What you do is you dump water in there and mix it around. And the nice thing about cocoa husk that you're using is it holds that moisture for a good amount of time. Mm-hmm. So if you do it right, 
you only have to uh, mix water in maybe once a week or once every two weeks, depending on how dry okay. it is in your in your. Place. Good to know. I just the other day found this in my closet, and I was like, I've got an extra one of these. Wow. Um, so I'm giving it to you. Well, lucky and, me. And we're gonna <laughs> lucky you, guys. I use both Switchbot and Govi. This one happens to be a Govi. I must have bought it a long time ago because I've only had Switchbot for for a while. Mm. But they both work great. So you got it. You got the top. Gives you the temperature. The bottom gives you the the humidity. Humidity. You want the wow. humidity around sixty to eighty percent. Okay. If, if the snake's going into shed, you want it around eighty. And sometimes higher. I even bump it up to ninety. Okay. Um, not for too long. You know, like the super yeah. high humidity you don't want, but okay. but eighty is great for the yeah. snake that's in shed. Yeah. Okay. Great. So that's wow. that. You really don't want to heat light, okay. and the reason is that if you do, and this is going to tell you if you actually need additional heat or not. Okay. Okay. So uh, the if you do need additional heat because it's cold, it's winter time, whatever, uh, you want to have that on 24 hours, but you don't want the light for 24 hours because the snake right. needs to be able to sleep and, and it messes Doesn't with their like circadian the rhythm. Okay. And a lot of times people say, well, snakes can't see red, so a red light works. Right. They can still see the light. It's not like they don't see the color red, but they can. it's still illuminated in their enclosure. Interesting. And... Uh, and you want them to, to have the, the darkness, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. So, and they're up during that time. They're, they're a crepuscular animal, mm -hmm. uh, meaning they're up when it's dark in the morning and they're up when it's dark at night, okay. in, in, in the evening. Okay. And they sleep a bit in the middle of the night and they sleep mostly during the day. You know? Okay. But you want to have the light and dark. So, if you find that you do need the overhead, use that socket and just get a ceramic heat element. Oh, for now, it's just okay. a ceramic bulb. It looks. Oh, I don't. I don't have one anymore. I used to have one. It's just a ceramic bulb. And yeah, it, and it just fits in the socket. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. everything ha has to change, right? Ab about the the way the snake. And this is Seth Ward has been taking care of a snake the way people took care of them for years because we just didn't know before. And there are still a lot of people that do that. So we just update the care and then move forward, and the snake will be happy. So the the really important things are the thermostat. You're gonna get the the oh this thermometer hygrometer mm -hmm. don't put it on the side of the enclosure just okay. set it on the ground okay because the snake's the gonna be at the ground okay yeah just just put it there and you know you're gonna measure the heat of the heat mat with the temperature gun mm -hmm. so just to order one on on Amazon they're yeah I don't know, yeah, yeah under twenty bucks or whatever they became really um, popular during the pandemic. A temperature gun did. That was why people were testing people's heads. Oh yeah! Oh touching, right, right, right. Yeah, it was yeah. Like a thing. Yeah, yeah. I didn't right. know they existed until the pandemic. I was like, everybody's got these weird guns. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so get a, get a temp gun because uh, you'll measure your heat mat on that. But just generally in the enclosure, you could put this on the cold side okay. and, and measure the temperature there. It should be around eighty ish, and okay. then and then your your humidity. You know, two hides. Get, get the two hides. You can order those. I'll tell you where to order those. We can talk about the feeding, like try try the feeding that we talked about. This is a lot of things and I realize it's a lot of things. Uh, no, I'm I'm into all of it. I can do all of these things. Cool, Easy. cool. Yeah. It's, you know, if I'm talking to somebody that I don't know and they're asking me a ton of advice, it's pretty common and it happens with everybody that like there's just an overload. There's, there ends sure, up being so sure. many things. And, um, but I can tell that you're into it and that you, you like, yeah. you want what's best for the snake. I truly, yeah, and oblivious yeah, to, just, to what was not good. Just like. didn't know. Yeah, yeah. This should get you started and we will, you know, maybe we'll do an update video or maybe I'll have you come in during a live stream or something. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd like in a couple cool. months and That'd you can great. hang out and, uh, Oh, I'd love that, yeah. And, and we'll, and we'll see how she's doing. I love so, that, yeah. That sounds great. Cool. Thanks well, for thanks, coming over, man. Thank you so much, Bob. Yeah. And thank you for these goodies. Holy man. Yeah, mother. well, I'm, I'm glad that I had some extra stuff that I can give you. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> thanks for watching, you guys. We'll see you next week. <laughs>